Hey guys, it's me, Lori the Herb Chick, and I'm coming to you from my backyard. We're not even taking any great hikes today. We're looking at everything in my backyard. So what I'm gonna talk about first is something called evening primrose. They're what I like to call a gift from the birds. Uh, bird droppings tend to contain seed of whatever they have eaten. So that's how a lot of people end up with um, uh, assorted thistle growing in their yard is because the birds eat thistle seeds. Uh, they sell those at all your uh, home improvement stores and such for bird seed. So if you don't want thistle in your yard, don't feed thistle seed to your birds. It's that simple. So anyways, we're gonna take a look at these evening primrose. Um, find one, a lot of the blooms on these that are real close to me here are about dried up and done. It is about 7.30, 7.45 in the middle of August here in Ohio. And so the blooms are going to be just opening up here soon. So the particular patch that I'm standing in front of right now sprung up in the middle of my mint patch and I just don't have the heart to take them down. However, if I don't take care of them, they will turn into a gigantic patch by next year because they do double in size much like lilies not in the same family but they do double a lot similar to it um and there is some morning glory i need to sort out of here as well but what we're going to look at is this guy right here let me pull it down so you can see the leaves on here they are totally edible Every single part of an evening primrose plant is edible. Now most people are familiar with these guys um, in their use as an oil. Pay no attention to me to the great big huge sow thistle behind me that I need to get pulled out. Um, also it usually will grow along with your evening primrose because it's in the bird droppings. But Usually, evening primrose is most famous for its oil. It's very high in something called gamma linoleic acid, which is an essential fatty acid. Now, while it's not exactly practical for me to collect the seeds, they are expeller pressed and you need a large quantity of seeds um, to get any amount of oil, there is a lot of medicinal use in the rest of the plant, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these leaves and I'm going to dry those towards my tea. Now, historically, the leaves were macerated or sometimes just chewed, and then that juice was rubbed in and used as a muscle tonic rub, okay? And that's historical use for that. Um, so I do know some, some massage therapists that do use evening primrose oil in their um, massage oils. Um, you also can make poultices from the pounded root, and that was said to be used for piles and boils. Um, mainly what I'm looking at though is I'm going to take a lot of the flowers and some of the leaves, and we're going to make a tea tonight, and I'm going to show you how to make a fresh tea. You can also dry them, which I do intend on doing, so that I can have the tea all winter long. So this is evening primrose, and like I said, the blooms on these are about done, and they're just starting to get these guys right here. Those are more blooms that will be opening up. Um, and then there is a fruit that comes after the blooms are done. So these blooms are a little dried up, a little past. And I just wanna give you an idea for how tall they get. Um, that is a good four foot with the tallest one in that clump being about five and a half foot tall. Um, they do get very, very tall. In fact, I can show you one that is growing in my, my grape arbor. So here's my grape arbor, which is taller than I am. And there's the evening primrose poking out the top there. Um, I just don't have the heart to pull it. You can see it's down here. That's where it starts, down there. And the leaves are for the evening primrose are right here. Okay, so you see there's a deep vein in them. 
Um, it grows extremely tall. It gets a stalk on it that um, tends to be, it appears slightly woody, but yet when you poke your fingernail into it, it does leak a little bit of sap like any herbaceous or non-woody plant. Um, the leaves were often used as poultices by Native Americans for bruising, as is much of the plant. Here you can see a little bitty one that's just starting to pop up here underneath my gray barber. So this guy, Evening Primrose, the Latin name for this is Oenothero bien. Oenothero bienis. I think I said that right. They grow anywhere from four to five feet tall or taller, as evidenced by the one in my gray barber. Okay, these are your flower buds right here. You see it's got a lot of flowering time left. These are the spent flowers. If I can get a good focus there, those are the spent ones. Um, we will be having some blooms opening up here real soon off of some of them, and I'll try to catch that if we can. We're going to make a tea out of the flowers tonight. If you know anybody that does fancy cake decorating, that kind of thing, they can take the evening primrose flowers, dip them in egg whites, and then enroll them in sugar, similar to how they do violets. Check out those leaves. This is indicative of the plant. You will see that very noticeable white vein growing through the middle of the leaves. They kind of come out in a whirl pattern. See how they kind of whirl around the central stem there? And the leaves are very much a dead giveaway that you have evening primrose. If I would have been thinking more, I would have a picture. I'll see if I can find a picture of when they started growing in the spring. Um, as you can tell, these little beauties will be opening up, if not tonight, they'll be opening up probably tomorrow. And I'm going to be drying some of this great stuff for tea. Now you can make a tea out of any part of the evening primrose plant. Um, the tea is said to treat laziness and over fatness now this is a traditional use that has been handed down um, from native americans they used it apparently it is supposed to have some sort of metabolic effects so i thought why not we're going to add this in there it also has a beneficial effect for pms and assorted female complaints that kind of thing um, that one's getting ready to open. We'll check back on it this evening. Now you can get as fancy or as plain as you want with a cup of tea. I have a couple of tea balls and um, they both work a little different. This one just pops apart. You put your tea stuff inside. This one, you squeeze it and it opens up. Um, it's totally up to your own preference, you know, and then it also depends on how much you can stick inside of there. So I think I'm just going to go with the larger one at this point and see if I can get it open with one hand. Okay, so we're just going to take our plant stuff. Oh, and there's our tea cuddle. We're going to take our plant stuff and stick it inside of the ball. Now, like any plant, um, when you put more flowers in it, it's going to be slightly sweeter to the taste. And we're going to put this back together and get some hot water over it and let it steep. Okay, tea ball is in, tea kettle is ready to go. Just gonna pour this over it and let it steep. Let it steep for about two minutes or so in boiling water and then it's ready to drink and you can put honey in it as you need and you'll have your tea of evening primrose. 
So, about two and a half minutes in, you get a great tea. Does not taste bad at all. If you're an herb tea lover, you'll really like this one. You can put it in with sweet things like hibiscus blooms. Um, you can put a little mint in there. Uh, all those good things. Tonight I'm doing just straight evening primrose, but you can definitely add other herbs to it as well. And just to make sure that we've covered everything that evening primrose is good for, um, I did want to mention that it's used primarily for hormonal complaints, at least when you're using the oil. Um, a lot of OBGYNs that I have seen in my lifetime suggest evening primrose royal oil for PMS, menopause type symptoms, sore breasts. Um, they even use it in order to assist in dilating the cervix prior to labor in order to kind of expedite things a little bit. Um, and then there's some evidence of historical use. Gotta watch how you say that. But there's evidence of historical use of the tea not only for what is called laziness or over fatness, um, indicating that they thought it to have some metabolic type effects, but it's also used for senility and debility. Um, definitely is very much encouraged for anyone who experiences menstrual pain or bowel pain, lower abdominal pain, that type of thing. It's said to ease that pain. So I'm going to sit here this evening in my backyard and watch my evening primrose blooms open and enjoy my cup of tea from the gift from the birds. If you want to learn more about herbs, be sure to like my channel and subscribe. You can even hit the link right down here for my website, which will take you directly to HerbChickOnline.com. I do work as an herbalist from my home, and I primarily help people make decisions and pick what type of alternative health practices may be better for them. Till next time.